Welcome to another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Up Sessions podcast. It is Thursday, December 1st. Mm-hmm. Wow. December 1st. Time is just <clears throat> zooming by. I mean, you, you just mentioned it was like two years of the podcasting. That's yeah. insanity. Um, so time time is moving by. I think first episode recorded in the roast the roastery. That's right. Yep. Um, yeah. I actually watched through one of your edits that you did on it. Yeah. You had the little split screen going, you know, like top down. Oh, yeah, Camera yeah. Cameras focused on both. It was, yeah. it was cinematic. It was creative. It was it's experimental. It was definitely yeah. experimental. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. not a traditional podcasting format. Yeah. You know, it was cool. So sometimes you need to just need to try new things. You don't know what clicks. Um, I think a lot. Of, I think it's really hard, actually, from like a creative standpoint to like think outside the box mm-hmm. because you're actually low key influenced by so many people around you that it's easy to just do what everybody else is doing. Because that's what everybody, it's like, it's like a safe way out, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's like when you try something interesting and different, it's mm-hmm. you know, the stakes are high. It's either you're going to fail really, really bad, which is mostly, yeah. most of the time what happens or you strike gold and it's like, yeah. you know, you're like on another level Yeah, and that's really hard to do, but that's the journey of a, yeah. I heard one, uh, it's a movie director or a cinematographer one time say like, in order to break the rules, you have to know the rules really, really well. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, that's correct. So, all right, let's pour some batchy. We have some uh, some Death Wish. Death Wish on coffee? the side. Oh, yeah. not Death Wish. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that was such a bad reference. No, we have no Death Wish coffee today. I don't think I'll. I've ever drink Death Wish. Is I don't that a think real I, thing? I don't is think Death I Wish want a coffee? to. A yes, thing? it is. I oh, think okay. so. That's the one that Joe Rogan, I think, is sponsored by. Or maybe not. <laughs> it's like they're like world's strongest coffee. It's like, guys, yeah. like, what does that even mean, world's strongest coffee? You can still water down the coffee. Brew at a 1 to 50 ratio. It's going to be pure water. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't understand. Weird. Maybe Anyways. It's just all Ristretto 101. <laughs> It's like you can only brew this coffee at a one to one ratio. Pour over a one to one. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe their TDS is just so high. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. We'll leave that death wish to explain, not us. It's nice. Definitely do course. I would say, mm-hmm. but but it's not it's not bad, yeah. but slightly coarse. Yeah. Um, on pour over, it's a lot more delicate. Um, this is nice. Nicer, it's a very but, nice feel. It's yeah. like blackberry. Getting any florals on it? Mm. It's like Stone it's like fruit, it's like blackberry. I think even black currant, but I could be. It's a little I, tart for a berry. It's tart. But I yeah, think that's because it's, it's underextracted. Well, it could be also because it's yep. a maybe a currant. Aren't currants uh, tart? A mm-hmm. little tart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm getting like black currant and chocolate. It's very juicy though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very nice. I like it a lot. Oh, as it cools, it's much better. Mm-hmm. Like it just sit in. It's it's very nice, it's and, juicy. Super nice and juicy. Yeah. It's great. This is a this is a Kenya. Um I don't I don't quite remember the the origin. I'm wait up, I'll be it's back. It's not the Karatina, it's not Karen Yaga, it's something else. Oh yeah. I've never actually heard of this. Mm-hmm. It's Kenya AA Kerry Rutuma. Kerry Rutuma. Yeah. Stone fruit, blackberry, chocolate. So, I mean, it's exactly what you said, yep. minus the chocolate. So It's nice. Um, it's great, yeah. It's a SL28, Ruru11, SL34. And Batian. And Batian. Yeah, washed. Um, so, a lot of varietals. I, to be honest, because of the, there being like a handful of varietals, I wasn't expecting very much out of this coffee. Um, but the clarity is still nice. The, the juiciness is still nice. Um 
Uh, yeah. Did you li- happen to listen to Lisa Farr's uh, The Map at Forward podcast about Kenyan coffee? She did a whole week. Mm-mm. Uh, it's worth a listen with a producer. Uh, it's very, it's, there's a reason why there's like more than one varietal and it's really hard to find a single varietal Kenyan. Yeah, it is. There's it's really hard for that. So I'm, I'm not going to give it away because y'all should listen to it. Don't want to spoil that conversation, but there is a reason. It's, int- it's mm-hmm. not just happenstance. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nice. Um, it's a solid Kenya. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I can jive with this. I'm gonna enjoy drinking the rest mm-hmm. of this. Um, For some reason, the label made me think this was like a uh, holiday blend. I don't know. What's their holiday blend label like? They have a little more design. It's a, It's the whole bag is different. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's like a blue, like it's like snowy oh, on yeah, the outside. Yeah, yeah. Right. this is a Kenya from Woods Coffee. Um, yeah, it's a it's it's a really solid Kenya. Um, I'm enjoying it, so not not a whole lot more to say other than it's a it's a great coffee. Nice. So if you, if you're lo- if you're local in Bellingham or in Bellevue, Seattle, um, Skagit, kind of somewhere in between, uh, and if you're looking for just another solid coffee to buy, I'd honestly recommend go stop by Woods, pick up a Kenya. Um, it's tasty. It's good. Yeah. So one pound bags too. Wow. Yeah. I don't see a lot of those. Yeah. Wow, and this is roasted on the twenty eighth, so this is very fresh. Mm-hmm. What's, what's I literally it's picked like... it up the day it was roasted. Oh, so this is three days off of roast. Yeah, man, dang, I gotta go into the roaster and compliment our friend. Um, why am I just blanking on his name? Who? I don't know if he's a listener. Shay? No, not Sam. Shay. Sam. Sam Thomas. Yeah. 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 It's been two two years um, on the podcast, which is very surreal. Wow. Um, I think uh, we missed out of two years each year. We probably missed like ten weeks, so mm-hmm. ten episodes a year. We missed, um, but still uh, a really exciting feat to yeah. to hit. Um, we're also approaching our three year anniversary, yeah. um, which will be low key kind of on christmas or like right before christmas mm-hmm. but then also officially it would be i think we launched january 1st yeah it's probably the worst time to launch a business but sure uh <laughs> um but i but i um but i will say it's it's been it's been quite an adventurous ride yeah. since then and i think we have a lot of fun stuff planned like we always keep talking about mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this was unintentional for us to launch all this on kind of a third three year yeah. mark, but it's that's 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 it. Close what's gonna happen. So um but that being said, uh we're also um we also run a business it's kind of like a family business, mm-hmm. but not 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 quite your traditional family yeah. business. And there's a lot of good and bad that comes with um, running a business within the family. Um, sometimes it can be really really great, and sometimes it can be really bad. Yeah, I, I think uh, with the amount of new listeners that we've kind of grown and our audience has grown, it I don't know if everyone is fully aware that like you and I are brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, um, grew up in the same household. We even shared a bedroom at one point, it's true. like when we were kids. Um, but we also have a decent uh, age gap. Is it what seven and a half years, seven to eight years, something like that? Something like um, that. So a decent age gap. So there, there's slight difference there. Um, we've also have had like different life experiences. You mm-hmm. lived in Portland, you know, for a while and stuff like that. So there's definitely a difference. But I, I think um, before, kind of, I want to talk about those differences i think there's been just this idea that you know running and starting a business with family is not necessarily the best for sure Um, it's not like you shouldn't do it there's a lot of family businesses Mm -hmm. especially in different industries not only the coffee industry but it seems to be here when people talk about it's like ooh, they started you know a family business yeah yeah uh so it kind of has a bad rap but I don't think, I don't necessarily think there's that's wrong. If that makes any sense, it's you don't think it's wrong that it has a bad rap. No, I don't think it's wrong to like have a, to family, have a family business or to go in business for with sure. Family. Yeah, I I don't think so either. And I think also on top of that, I also think it's very fair to have a negative rap around this because, 
um, you know, to play devil's advocate. So like, uh, I think it makes sense that, you know, when you, when you attach something like work, a profession, a career, when you attach, uh, stuff, especially like money and finances, um, uh, things can get really, really dicey and really sketchy. And it's one thing I think to, um, I'm not supporting any criminals or any villains <laughs> by saying this, but I'm saying, and I'm not saying that it's okay either, but I think there's, it's one thing to like have a sour experience with a, with a, you know, with a coworker mm-hmm. and having a sour experience either with your boss or with one of the people that are, that you manage or mm-hmm. uh, a co-founder. Um, and it's a different experience when you have, when you have that sour experience with a coworker, a boss, a co-founder that happens to be mm-hmm. like a brother or yeah. a sister or I mean a spouse even yeah. like it's kind of, there's, there's a lot of different dynamics because I mean, I think we all would agree that like there's a different level of commitment and mm-hmm. experience and um, it just hits different between a family and a close friend. Yeah. Like there's noticeable differences. So the stakes are a little bit higher because it's not that you can just have, you know, oh, you hate this coworker, so you yeah. just, you know, I don't know, yeah. do something bad to them and then you leave or whatever on bad terms. It's like, yeah. that's not good. You should never be doing that. But it's kind of different when that's like your your family. Yeah, it's much harder to disconnect Yeah, in general yeah. and separate if business possible. from relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's much harder. Um, like even, you know, good friendships – like you said, can go sour and mm-hmm. you can go your separate ways and you may not be friends, but it's really, really hard to not be family with family. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've all heard of, you know, bad family experiences yeah, and yeah. families torn apart and stuff like that. I'm saying that that can happen, but it's much harder, much more traumatic. So when you go into business with family, you risk that happening yeah you're um, you, there's there's, the there's definitely an elevated risk and yeah. the tension can be like hard uh tighter and yeah there could just potentially be much heavier and harder feelings when it comes to managing things yeah. especially like you said money money you know that's that's for a sure one. and i think especially when things get bigger there's more money involved there's more stakes yeah. involved there's all this stuff that ends up bringing out a different side of you um, like, like money does, like power does, like, yeah. um, success does to you, like fame does to yeah. you, like it will bring out a different side. And so I think that's going into any of these, you have to keep that in mind. And yeah. you, I actually think, um, I don't know. I'm just, I've never thought about this, but I don't think you should ever forget that. Yeah. I think that's something that's just something that comes with running a business with family is that you always have to carry that burden mm-hmm. all the time. And you really have to always have that at the back of your head and realize is that it's a constant every single day. You have to really decide like, Hey, this is a business, but, and really decide that, Hey, family is going to come first before any business. So uh, you much rather lose on, you know, a uh, half a million dollar deal over a relationship yeah. you have to establish that and that always has to be the core if if that's where your priorities yeah, lie if like say. if that's sure if you just want to yeah. make more money at the yeah. st- at the at the at the cost of your yeah. family sure you don't have to think yeah. about that but i think if we're you know if we want to reflect what's good i think relational yeah. always has to be at, at its at, at its biggest priority and so i think you have to a establish that for yourself personally keep yourself accountable for that Mm -hmm. but also um enter into all of business with that in mind and never forget that so yeah i think a good example of that is uh the movie house of gucci i don't know if you've seen it no no. um basically you know gucci is a family-owned business Mm -hmm. um and the tension the relationship there um the tension with the uncle who's kind of wild in his fashion design um just a bunch of you know a bunch of family issues there so i think that's a good example but i think um just look because i was looking back and thinking when i was looking at those episodes i was just thinking about like our experience and like how 
we got into business. And I, I think we also have a very unique uh, setting when we went into business together. Uh, because when I moved out of the house, you moved out of the house, we had such very different experiences in mm -hmm. life. Uh, like my time in Nashville and Florida, my job as a minister, um, mm -hmm. and then you having your job here and then moving to Portland. Mm -hmm. And all both of us had these like coffee enlightenment experience, which we've talked on the pod a few times. If you want to check out those episodes, mm -hmm. they're there. Um, but those experiences were similar, yet they were very different. They For were sure. very personal For sure. in that sense. So I, I think kind of the, the pro or mm -hmm. kind of the beauty of like our um, yes. ability to step into businesses family is those unique personal experiences. For sure. I think, I think it's a very valid thing to, to highlight. And I didn't get into coffee because you got into coffee and you didn't get into coffee because I didn't get into coffee. So this was like a very wide, like we're talking coast to coast. Yeah. I remember the phone call that we jumped on and the, you know, it was like, you know, have you heard of this coffee thing? Like, this is like a real thing that people yeah. do. And it's kind of, it's kind of intriguing and there's nuance to it. And that was when that was our first time talking and we're like, Oh yeah. Like we've been, we've both low key have been kind of learning and growing in this and still not really sure what it's like. And so that was, that was a very memorable experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that that's how it happened because I'm not in this simply because I'm, you know, attaching myself to what you're doing mm -hmm. and you're not in this attaching yourself to what I'm doing. It's more of like, oh no, there's already an intri intrigue. It just happens yeah. to be that we're also related, you yeah. know, like yeah. to look at it the other way around. Yes, it's like there was, there was interest already there that kind of, um, yeah, that, that yeah. was already present. And so that, I think that helps a lot actually. Yeah. And I think our two personal uh, and separate passions that we had had this like moment where everything like came into fusion, like everything just blended together. And there was that spark created, which out of that like experience came about mirror and the idea and vision behind what would we want to make in uh, what would we want to create in the coffee industry and how would we do it? And that's what made it unique. And I think, that area where our kind of vision blended and it got infused together is really kind of where we can see our personal traits, our characteristics start coming out, our strong suits, our similarities start shining is because when we shared our personal experiences, we were like, we would both actually do it in a very similar fashion, mm -hmm. yet not identically the same. And that's also a strong suit, right? Uh, I think because we share those things that we easily connect over. And then we also share our perspectives from slightly different angles. I think I'm just thinking back to our interview with Maxwell Mooney of Narrative Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't listened to that episode, I'd highly recommend you to go back and listen to it. It's a really, it's probably our most listened to episode and for very good reasons, it's it's really great. But anyways, he talks a, a little bit about leading from, from, from values, leading from an inner already like um, that he's creating a culture and a way of doing things based on the values that he lives by. And I think that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this situation because you're right, like when we first started conspiring like what are we going to do and is this even possible is this something mm -hmm. that we're going to pursue i think we came from also very similar values very similar yeah. perspectives even though our skill sets were, were fairly different mm -hmm. um our experiences were fairly different but also at the same time our unity or our same similarity in having a passion for coffee and then having these these values that we we want to live by um, was actually where this whole concept of reflect what's good came out of. Yes, that exactly. became actually the core, the binding aspects that is building the mirror yep. culture, is building the mirror brand, is building the mirror um, decision. And out of that comes like we can make decisions based off of these values, based yep. off of these core identity um, things, which I think is very helpful because. Yep. If we didn't have that, I think it would be actually really challenging. Yeah. Like if that was a difference, it would be really hard to make decisions 
with our values being different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. where the decision making is coming from. Not to say that we see eye to eye in all business decisions by yeah. by no means. Yeah. But that that also wouldn't be a strong suit. I think that's also potentially one of the um like the dangers of going into business with family is seeing every single decision eye to eye. Um, yeah, I think yeah. there's danger in that because you can also not see the blind spots and not have like a counter argument or a counter viewpoint. And I think that's the beauty of like our values being our anchor and almost like our family values being our anchor. But then our differences are also like perspective shifts. Like mm -hmm. we can look at the same thing and notice different elements of the same thing, but approach them different. I mean, to get very, very even specific, how we discuss our roast curves, yeah. how we discuss our dial-ins. Um, like whenever we say, how do we fix this roast? Say, well, I would make the gas changes. Like I usually say something dumb, like do you charge hotter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, we should probably decrease gas here. Yeah. And then we usually kind of wrestle with both of those different perspectives and then say, well, what if it's neither of those? What if it's actually this one? Mm -hmm. Because we are able to see that. I think it would be way more dangerous if every decision we made is like the same thing. You know, when you touch upon that, it's like there, I mean, this is the difficulties of, you know, having an equal co-founder and having a business partner is that um, there are differences and there will be things that you have to wrestle with. That's the difficulty. And for some of you who are watching, who are thinking, man, um, who are thinking like, I want to start a coffee shop business, but I, I see this sometimes. Should I seek for investors? This is one mm -hmm. thing. If you find an investor who's just going to dump money in, uh, at you, uh, that may be really helpful for you because capital is important. Mm -hmm. But I will say on the flip side, it's going to be really challenging because you're going to have to think about that investor yep. nearly just as much as what you want. Yep. You're going to have to make sure that they're at least somewhat aligned with you. And the, the difficulty gets is like when you have somebody who gave you the capital and the resources to build this thing up, you're putting in all the time and all the energy and building and doing all the rough, heavy labor work. And then you have to approach somebody and mm -hmm. and consider their opinion when they're not putting in the work. Not to yeah. say that that's bad. Yeah. They, they actually, they played a vital part by giving right. you these resources. You didn't have that before. But that's something to consider is that now you have to deal with an investor and you have to realize that you're at one point going to have to give back the money and possibly with some with some more on top. Yep. But you know what I mean? And that's 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 the nuance with whether it's a family or non-family. Yeah. But I think you're totally right that having a difference of opinion creates such a more dynamic experience. You know, like you said, whether that's in our roasting approach, in our you know, flavor, how we cup coffees, how yeah. we, how we think about flavor profiles, how we, um, everything, but also on creative decision-making mm -hmm. or how should we run a business? Do we need to add another product line to it? Yep. I think, um, at least the way I've learned how I dealt with it, deal with it. And this could be kind of more entrepreneurial or bootstrap kind of thing where I'm like, I'm just going to throw out ideas yep. and just see what sticks. sticks. Yep. And, what actually is beneficial to me is like when I throw out like an idea and you're like, dude, that was dumb. And I'm like, great. I, yeah. And I don't get offended by that, yeah. but I'm like, cool. That's good that you challenged me because that, that builds actually more trust mm -hmm. that you're not just going to say yes to any idea that I'm throwing out. And that's so helpful. Yeah. It would be even bad if I, if everybody around me just agreed with me and said, oh yeah, that's a great idea to every idea. Yep. Because that's not true. It's yep. not a great, like, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm talking a lot, but <laughs> I remember like when we had a conversation um, where I, I don't remember what it was, but generally speaking, like you brought forth an idea and I just challenged you, challenged you. And it was less more like, I think you took it as more like I was actually opposing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where in fact, I was just challenging you yep to get you to just think twice yeah. and at least that may not be how you function, but that's yeah. how I function. Like yeah. if I'm throwing out an idea, I want to be, I want somebody to say, Hey, that's dumb or Hey, that's actually yeah. a good idea. Or 
you might need to think about that a little more or, you know, like not everything that I say needs to be taken to heart, yep. but that's how I process things is I just want to throw stuff out 100%. there and, uh, and having a different perspective is what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's good. I think, uh, playing fair in disagreements is key because it's very, very easy to take things personally. I mean, you and I joke about this mm-hmm. concept of like, I'm just a bagger perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You yes. Know, it's like, you know, what do I know? I'm, I'm just a bagger I'm just here a, on Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> like, just bagging coffee. It's like, I mean, there's this days is the, where... This is the co founder that's saying, I'm just a bagger. <laughs> I just weigh yeah. 340 grams of coffee yeah, and exactly. seal. <laughs> yep. And that's it. Grind, seal, or just, you know, seal, and that's it. Yeah. And I, I think it's really important to see these disagreements, especially within the context of family within the context of relationship is to be able mm-hmm. to play fair in disagreements yeah, yeah, and then not take it personally too. And then understand that there is that infused good that's happening, like mm-hmm. coming from you coming from me and that these opposing views are actually very, very beneficial yeah. to growing and fostering something that we really, really care about. That's a, that's part of the difficulty is that, you know, something that you're going to say to me, feels different than what Bob Joe down the street says to mm-hmm. me. And there's a sense of um there there like your words do matter more because you are family. And that's something that you need to be aware of. Um but at the uh, you know on the other hand, it also helps um sometimes it helps that you know I we can be a little more direct or a little bit more honest or a little bit more real and know like at the end of the day, he's still a brother. He's still yep. family. And there's yep. some kind of a safety net, but yep. the difficulty, the real difficulty is that you really need to be intentional. You really need to think about what you're saying. You really need to be um, aware of those things because once again, the stake that you're playing at is family. Yep. The stake that you're playing at is a very um, intimate relationship. And I think a big one for that is um, with that difficulty, you really need to... Uh, see the other person for some someone not less than you yep. but almost equal if not greater yeah and that's that's very difficult that's a humbling experience and uh definitely assuming the best in somebody else yeah. i think that's a big one i know trust will be broken at some point or somebody's gonna do somebody wrong mm-hmm. that's gonna happen yep. but constantly coming back to the table and saying hey i'm gonna um I'm going to assume that you have my best in mind. Mm-hmm. I'm going to assume that you have the business's best in mind, not just yourselves. You're not just fully selfish and in it for yourself. Yeah. And that having coming back to the to the table with that kind of optimism, I think helps. Yeah. And when there's miscommunication or a misunderstanding or it's like, wait a second, that didn't sound like that's the best for me. Mm-hmm. So that means I need more clarity on yeah. what was said. I mean, 100%. You said like a lot there and a lot of it was like basically reading my mind in all of these things because being at relational, there's so much more at stake, but it's not always this heavy burden that's at stake of like, Oh my gosh. Like if I mess up, like I kind of screw everything over. Mm-hmm. There is that safety net of the relationship, but there's also this kind of, um, like, uh, I don't know the, for a lack of better terms, like this fear, but it's not this like tantalizing fear, but this like respect, Mm -hmm. To say like, man, like I want to honor you also as much as I can in this decision making. So Mm -hmm. I have to double think my decisions here. I have to make sure that, you know, I cross my T's. I dotted my I's on this because I really, really have this like honor and respect to, hey, I'm not only making a decision for me as a Mm co-owner, I'm making a decision for you as a co-owner and you're also family. Yeah. And there is that weight that I think can also be both. It can, it can be a good and a bad in owning a, f- a family business. Like you were saying about the safety net. I think that's, that's great. That's to a degree relaxing, but then also it requires so much like honesty and honesty is not just, it's not easy to walk out. Like mm-hmm. you have to be intentional about honesty for sure. And that also comes from the state of understanding the dynamic, having that self-awareness within mm-hmm. the business understanding like hey at the end of the day we are family i know mark but i also 
don't really know exactly who he is because he's also a human. And I can't yeah. just simply rely on the fact that I know Mark because he's my brother. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I think within a family context, you can get very lax with that. Mm-hmm. And then honesty doesn't become like very intentional. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I think um, this might be controversial to say, but Mark, the brother, is different than Mark the business owner, Mark, the creative, Mark, the X, Y, and Z. Like, that's the reality of it. Like, the way the way I may act at a, you know, at a family gathering will be much different than how I act in a business meeting where there's different things on the line. I mean, unless we're and, playing Splendor. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, to, yeah that's fair. That. Well, yeah, or when I'm playing Splendor, <laughs> there's a different mark that comes out. But but not to say, and it's not to say that you're being fake or unreal yeah. in one or the other, but it's the circumstances that call out a different level of who you are or mm-hmm. a different um, a different approach to things. And I think that's very valid, yeah. but that... In the context of a family business, you need to realize like, yeah, there's also the brother brother and then there's also the brother that owns the business and then there's also the brother that's the coffee professional and there's also this and that and not, and being able to approach those things as like, oh, that's something different, oops, that's something different that I need to learn actually, that I need to discover, that I need to kind of figure out and not just assume that it's the same across the board. Right. yeah, I yeah. think what you're saying, like in music context, like every artist has different albums and every album has different songs. And within all of that, every song can require different levels on the equalizer, yeah. Yeah. you know, and not to say that, you know, the artist is different. I no, it's the same artist. Yeah. It's just some songs have just different highlights than the other songs and you have to equalize to those. And I, I think I think that's great. I, I don't necessarily, th- I, th- I think it could potentially for some people get very, very toxic where they live a, like a double life, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. But the, I don't hear you saying that. I hear you more or less saying like there's different, uh, there's different environments where I shine yeah. differently. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And you get to actually, the more stuff you do, the more holistically you can be like just experience as a person for sure, you know, within different contexts. So yeah, I a hundred percent, I think, I think that's great. Um, I th- I think in all of this, like as just kind of as we mm-hmm. wrap things up, this has kind of been a longer episode, longer than I imagined. But um, I think at the end of the day, uh, the conclusion would be like, dude, I there's there's a lot of great things in going into uh, mm-hmm. a family business for sure. Like I, yeah. if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence and you're like, man, I really really you know want to go into business with my parents or my siblings. Um, I hope that this episode kind of highlighted those elements that yeah. are very, very good because I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of value in doing that. So I, w- I would continue to encourage folks to process this information, process what we have said, and then also weigh out like why why a family business? Like why not just some investors? Mm-hmm. Um, what's the tie? Like why would you want to bring in someone that you deeply care about and you're connected to them for life? Yeah. And sometimes that's totally okay to say this is not worth it. Mm -hmm. Like that's totally okay. Um, You don't have to put that on the line for business. And once again, like to end it, maybe the way we started is that has to be something that you put down and you settle in set in stone that relationships matter more than a money, an extra deal, an extra opportunity. And if if that's what you've agreed in yourself, sometimes the way that's manifested or the way you live that out is by not starting at all. Yeah, that's a good point. You know what I mean? And that's that's totally okay. That's totally appropriate. But um, yeah, there's definitely challenges, unique challenges that come with running a, a family business. And um, it's definitely worth thinking twice about because once again, the stakes are high. Yeah. So any final thoughts? Yay. Not much. That was good. That was fun to talk. Uh, this is a very interesting. It was topic, a strange. Like a strange. It was topic. definitely. I'm, strange I'm glad to that talk we tackled, yeah. uh, uh, tackled yeah. it and went through it because it's a good one. And yeah. As I, as I continue thinking about it, I hope that every listener realizes that this is not a black and white 
circumstance. There is no right answer here. Yes. Just lean into knowing who you are um, and yeah. asking those hard questions. For sure. I mean, I could we I could I could easily do another part two to this because there's so much to talk about. But um, if you're still listening, thank you so much for tuning into this episode and getting a little glimpse as to what that looks like to run a business with, you know, family, um, whether or not you're even thinking about it or you're not at all. This is some of the stuff that we have to think about. We have to consider. So uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, Feel free to hit that subscribe button, the like button. Put some stars on there. Put some reviews on there. In the comments below under this YouTube video, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop some comments. Uh, send us a DM, an email with some of your thoughts. We're always open to hear um, and share what we know if you have any specific questions. But that being said, friends, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Sessions podcast. And remember, as always, reflect what's good. <laughs>